Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to start looking at the kinetic theory of gases. So we've done quite a lot on gases now. We know all of the experimental gas laws. We know the ideal gas law and its assumptions uh, which are going to come in useful again in this video. Um, we know about PV diagrams and the fact that pressure times a change in volume would equal amount of an amount of energy that we've changed in the system or work done on or by the system. But we also looked at the internal energy of the system to begin with and we said that the internal energy of a system is always equal to the sum of all the kinetic energies and potential energies. Now it's useful to know just an equation that would tell us the amount of kinetic energy since the amount of potential energy is quite a, a difficult thing to measure specifically but kinetic energy seems like something that would be measurable and so we have to come up with some sort of uh, formula in order to explain the kinetic energy uh, present in this entire gas. And this is known as the kinetic theory model. And so we're going to derive the kinetic theory model in uh, this video. And it's going to take a little bit of math knowledge. So the first thing that I want to do is first introduce you to a concept called the root mean squared. So the root mean squared. Okay, and this is just going to be referred to as the RMS value. Okay, so root mean squared just means RMS. Now, the word mean in here suggests we're taking an average, but then we have this square and this root, and it kind of me makes it uh, something that's not quite obvious. Now, what we're going to look for in this video is saying that if I wanted to, for example, add together velocities, find an average velocity for something, if I have a gas um, system where I'm going to have some molecules that are moving in this positive direction, I'm going to have some molecules that are moving in this negative direction, if I then add these two together, I end up with no overall velocity, right? Even if I have two things here, my average velocity for the system currently is zero which can't be true because that would then imply that I have no kinetic energy even though I know both of these things are moving, right? So I have to come up with a way that I can take an average of vectors without um, cancelling any of them out. And that's what the root mean squared is. So this is um, basically just an average of vectors. So it doesn't matter uh, what direction they're travelling in because I'm now going to follow the steps of the root mean squared and then I am going to be able to get an average velocity among all of these things. So the way we calculate a root mean square, if I imagine having um, a three-dimensional um, plane, so I'm going to have a z here, I'm going to have x here, and I'm going to have y here. So this is just a 3D um, coordinate system, and I'm going to imagine any kind of Thing that's moving in the x direction, uh, in the positive x direction, has a speed of u x. Anything that's moving in the positive y direction has a speed of u y, and anything moving in the positive z direction has a speed of u z. Now, in order to calculate a root mean squared, what I have to do is step one: square everything. Okay, so. I'm actually, you'll find we just do the backwards of this. So we square all the values first. So I'm going to end up with um, uy squared plus ux squared plus uz squared. Then what I'm going to do is take a mean of all of these, of uh, these three. So I then uh, take a mean, which means I'm going to add all of these three up. So actually, so far, I shouldn't be adding these. It's just ui squared, ux squared, and uz squared. The mean, therefore, becomes uy squared uh, plus ux squared plus uz squared, all divided by 3. And then my final step is to square root it. So I get that this is equal to the square root of uy squared plus ux squared plus uz squared all over 3. And this is your steps. So notice how it's called root mean square, but actually what you're going to do is a square mean and a root. 
Now you don't actually have to um, do this too often. It's not really going to come up. You just have to realize that the root mean squared is just a way of averaging uh, vectors. What we're going to say for this though is that if we were to do these individually, I could come up with a total root mean squared, so C RMS, um, and I'm going to square this, so I'm not going to square root at the end, I'm just going to square it and then mean, and it would be the same as saying I take the mean of u x squared, so this is, I'm going to use this idea that u is the mean, so this bar on the top means the average, so this is the mean of all u x plus the mean of all u y plus the mean of all u z, all squared. Okay, and this is going to be the formula that I'm going to refer back to uh, at some point in this video. Now we need to start with the actual derivation. So what we're going to do is I'm going to leave this here for now and we're going to set up a system. So we need a system uh, to begin our derivation and this system I am going to say is just a cube uh, filled with gas and in this cube uh, all of the lengths of the sides are equal since it's a cube so I'm going to call them all a length L so this is L and this is L and I'm going to set up the same coordinate system so if I have I'll just draw it uh, quite small up here if it's going upwards it's in the Z direction sideways in the X and towards um, this bottom face it's in the Y direction and now I'm going to say that I know I have n particles in this uh, system, but for now I'm just going to focus on one. Okay, so I'm just going to say I have one particle and I'm going to assume that it's moving in the ux direction uh, with a speed ux. Okay, now what you might be saying at this point is surely things aren't just going to move in the x direction, y direction, or z direction, they can have any direction in any of uh, any. Um, summation of these vectors, right? So it means that if I'm taking ux, I'm just taking the component of x in that speed. So I'm resolving it for um, x, y, and z, and I'm going to treat all of the components of x together, then all of the components of y together, then all the components of z together, and then add them all up at the end. So if I want to um, have this here, the first thing I can do is come up with an idea that I know an amount of energy is going to be a pressure times a volume, okay? So I need an expression for pressure, first of all, so that I can then uh, see if I can multiply that by a volume and see if that does anything. So we first need to make an expression for pressure. Now, what we know is that pressure is just force over area. Okay, so I can make two separate um, ideas here of the force uh, acting on the particle or on the wall even uh, and the area that it's spread over which is just going to be this square face here. So I first have to figure out an expression for F. Now I know if it's coming with a speed of ux in this direction and it's going to hit a boundary and then I know it's going to bounce off because um, what I should mention is we're going to take all of the ideal gas assumptions, which means all of these kinetic, uh, all of these um, collisions are going to be elastic collisions, which means kinetic energy is conserved. This is just going to bounce off with a speed of minus uh, ux. Now, what this means is the change in momentum of the particle is going to be, um, we know it's delta mv over delta t. Okay. Now I'm going to say that delta mv, I'm assuming this particle uh, has a mass m, and I'm going to make the assumption that everything in this gas has the same mass m. And I know m is going to stay constant, so I don't have to worry about that. My final velocity is minus mu x, or u x, and my initial velocity was u x. Okay, but I have to minus the positive u x. And then I have to think, okay, but what time is this going to happen for? So what I need to then do is say that um, the time between uh, 
the time that collisions occur is negligible in comparison to the time between two collisions with the same uh, side. So if I'm going to have a total momentum change, I need to look at the time that it takes for this particle to get from here back to here and then back to this wall again. So I can then come up with a separate expression for the time and I know that time is equal to, well if, let me make this more clear, if velocity is equal to the displacement over time um, and I know the velocity that it's traveling at, I can say that time is going to be the displacement over the velocity. But actually, I'm going to say that for this, I just want a distance and a speed because I'm only taking the component of this, so I'm just going to give it a magnitude. So I'm just going to change this to being the distance over the speed. Okay, now the distance I can already figure out. If I'm at this point and I have to move here, that's a distance of L across, and then I have to move back, so that's a distance of 2L that I've traveled. And the speed is the same at all points. It's UX, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say the force here is equal to minus 2M UX, okay? Divided by 2L, over ux. Now one thing I should point out this negative is because this is the force on the particle but if I want the pressure I need to get the force on the wall which means that it's just going to be in the opposite direction so I basically just get rid of this negative sign. So then f must be equal to and I can cancel this 2 with this 2 and I must bring this ux up to the top and multiply it so I end up with F is equal to M U X squared over L, okay? And this is my expression um, for the force. Then I know if I want the pressure, I need to also divide this by the area. So that means pressure is gonna be this expression, M U X squared divided by L, and then divided by L squared which I'm just gonna say I could simplify, and if I divide this expression by L squared, I will get L cubed. Now, L cubed is just the volume of this cube, right? So I can say that this pressure now is equal to M U X squared divided by V. Now we're at a point where I can say that um, this is the pressure that is due to a single molecule traveling in a single direction. But I could have done the exact same derivation and just replaced ux with uy or uz. And so I can end up with actually the total pressure is going to be the average of these three pressures, right? So I'm going to end up with p, um, or the total pressure, is going to be m. Uh, and I'm also going to multiply by n in this case now. So I'm gonna say that I have uh, n amount of molecules, so it's not just gonna be one molecule bouncing off all surfaces, I now have the sum of all of the speeds. So I have n particles in this system, they all have a mass of m, I can divide that by um, v, because that's here, and I know that I can have the sum of ux squared plus uy squared plus uz squared. And now what I'm going to say is that if I'm taking the average of these three speeds, these are all going to be averages, and because of that, I have to divide this by three. Now what I said earlier was that the CRMS squared is this exact expression, plus uz squared, which means I can actually just replace this with this average speed, and then I get my final equation. I end up with the equation that P uh, is equal to Nm over 3V times CRMS uh, squared. This isn't the equation that you get on your formula sheet, however, there's a little bit of a difference. I'm actually gonna say that in order to get an energy on both sides, I have to multiply it up by V, 
and so the actual equation that you get on your formula sheet should be PV is equal to one third times N times M times C RMS squared. And this is the kinetic theory of gases. You are expected to know this derivation. You won't be expected to know it um, to this level of detail. If anything, you could skip probably a few steps, but I would say um, to make sure that you guarantee all the marks in the exam, learn the whole der derivation. It's not exactly too complicated. We're just using expressions that we know from um, AS and also from GCSE with like speed is distance over time. So all we're gonna do is put all of these expressions together and then end up with some final result. Now this final result, PV, is telling us the total amount of energy uh, in this, which means this result is also telling us the total amount of energy in this. And actually what you can probably tell is that this looks like a kinetic energy because this is a half times the total mass because it's n times the amount of masses that we have times v squared. So I end up with some factor. So the only difference is a third here. And for those of you doing maths, you'll probably um, be able to prove otherwise that this is just an integration factor. And so I end up with an expression that gives me the total amount of kinetic energy in this system. Thank you for watching.